Act I of Gulzara, or the Persian Slave, by Anna Cora Mowat. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Personae Amareth, a boy of ten years of age, son of the Sultan Suleiman. Read by Jasmine Selma. Zuleika, daughter of the Sultan. Read by Kelly Taylor. Fatima, companion of Zuleika. Read by the Story Girl. Katinka, read by Larry Wilson. Aisha, wife of the fisherman Mustafa. Read by T.J. Burns. Galzara, newly purchased slave of the Sultan Suleiman. Read by E.J. Lavery. Stage directions read by Wayne Cook. Scene Constantinople. Act One. Scene One. The chamber of Zuleika in the harem of Sultan Suleiman. Zuleika reclining on a couch, engaged in embroidery. Fatima seated on a cushion at her feet, winding bright colored silks. Zuleika showing her work. How think you it is shaped, this tinted flower? mimics it nature well dear fatima so skilfully the dullest slave had vowed it grew beneath Zuleika's fairy hand thou flatterer how fain i'd let thee cheat mine eyes to think thine true for tis to win the guardian of my father's smile these hues in broadway blend dear father sweet the toil that boasts the best reward to pleasure thee whose labours joy imparting doth himself with his own gift enrich again showing her embroidery but tis twill done in sooth most dexterously but if twere ill methinks that never fell the partial eye of your most idolizing sire on aught those fingers traced when broke not rapturously his sympathizing lip in smiles alas when shall that eye of love once more meet mine Three moons have wearied with their lustre since the death-fraught blast of war hath robbed your bower of its dear lord, Zuleika of her sire. Oh, how I long to hear that Baghdad owes victorious Suleiman her conqueror, that Persia's king before his footsteps flies, and homeward bound those steps my father turns. Were not for my young brother's joyousness, your varying tales and loved companionship, how tedious since the drum's first beat had lagged old time's decrepit feet. For favorites, mured in yon pent harem's bounds and languishing, like flowerets mid some thickly shaded wood, that wasted wither, pining for the sun, they might, but not for her the arbitress of good who scarce by thirteen springs matured with mightier sceptre sways these harem walls than ever wielded spoilt sultana yet unless it were roxalana's self indeed whom suleiman tis said made peace or war enslaved the free or loosed the captive's chain to please asks roxalana's child for more Prithee have i not told thee prattling girl tis not the might my sire's indulgent love invest me with save when that power i use rather in recompense than punishment adds to my son of happiness one beam and yet you deem me too omnipotent forget the sultan e'en in bounteous love or sweeping reason's bulwark wise hath left the kislar aga of our harem's guard sole chief supreme approval of my deeds that age's coldness temper youth's wild warmth but waste we not to-day my father's gift how shall we honour it in the employ of good were it not well used in summoning gulzara the young persian slave the last and loveliest purchase of our honoured lord whom yester eve a niobe of tears the speechless incarnation of despair was hither brought and whom our harem all successless strove to cheer be yours the task well said 
be such my occupation here. No tear shall fall within Zuleika's realm. Zuleika's hand shall not essay to dry, save one drop that springs from guiltless woe. A diamond in my crescent should grow dim. She claps her hands three times. Enter Katinka with obeisance. Galzara, greet for me. Say in our bower, we wait the pleasure of her company. Sultana, I have wings at your command. Exit with obeisance. For friendly sympathy shall she not lack, that honeyed thief who stealeth sorrow's sting, and wounds itself to heal another's pain. Re-enter Katinka as before. Obedient to your wish, princess, she comes. Enter Golzara slowly, who bends to Zelinka, and exit Katinka. Welcome, young stranger, in my father's name. I bid you to his palace welcome, and may hospitality that waits your steps and kindly friendship make its shelter dear. I were ungrateful not to give you thanks. Nay, spare them until fairly won, for still that eye with gathering moisture half flows o'er. That brow is shadowed by voiceless gloom. In yonder sumptuous harem find you aught engendering grief? Gulzara, confused. Oh, yes, no, yes. Spare me, peerless sultana. Spare your slave until my untaught tongue has smoothly learnt to frame, despite a heart or swelling with such thoughts as may not break the barrier of my lips, such complacent reply as to your rank is due. You wrong me most unwittingly, as the skilled Hakim seeks the malady which, knowing not, he cannot hope to cure, Gozara, I would hear the uncoloured truth. What in the gay Zanana like you not? It lacks to me the humble look, the dear, familiar aspect of my native cot. Your broidered cushions cannot bring me sleep. Your flattery is joy, or gorgeous splendour peace. "'Tis not my home. "'Yet such must henceforth be. "'What art of ours can render it less strange? "'Have you the art these gilded walls "'to give the unpolished rudeness of my father's hut, "'where every object that I gaze upon "'brings back the story of some childish hour "'to bid that father's holy smile beam forth, "'the placid light that cheers our toil or sport, "'to wake for me my mother's gentle tone, whose warbling makes the bulbul's music harsh, and with gay childhood's laughter glad mine ear. Take back your splendid luxuries. In lieu of wealth and ease, these lowlier treasures give. Though labour be my lot, and scanty food toils recompense, were this boon possible, then might I call your palace prison home. Such magic know I not. Yet must we strive to make our bowers as dear as stranger ones can be. Claps her hands, enter Katinka. Your softest cushion hither bring. Exit Katinka, and returns with the cushion, which she places where Zuleika, by waving her hand, directs, and, after waiting an instant as for commands, exit again. The downy couch invites your yielding form. Our converse may beguile the weary hours that fastest fly by thoughtless mirth pursued. Golzara, seating herself. Forgive me that I have not guile to force the merriment that should to yours respond. Could but the soothing hand of pity heal the blow of cruelty, my bosom scarce would bleed. I pray thee woo more cheerful thoughts, that sure physician time brings certain cure for every wound with holier charms shall robe these stranger walls than those you languish for to-day you know not yet my father's soft and gentle nature yes the day will come when changed golzara more than home or kin shall love the sultan suleiman golzara starting from her seat love him love him thy father ay great cause is mine to love the sultan suleiman to pay him back for banishment from all most dear parents and home 
and sweet companionship of joyous sisters. With that only gift the opulent may prize but cannot force, the poor preserve to offer love. You jest indeed, Zuleika, born in high estate and chained by chilling forms that riches weave to curb down speaking nature's warmer impulse. Thou canst not know the sweet reunion round the evening hearth when day's toils cease, the shout of gleeful children mingling with the low and thrilling music of the zebeck waked, or, softer still, the praise from lips revered that consecrates some act of bygone day, the holy blessing on each bended head, that potent opiate wooing happy sleep and radiant dreams, the dusky brow of night grown old and tinged with grey which dying give expectant morning birth thou canst not paint how freshened by the wholesome rest that's given to poor content we meet and with renewed affection usher in the welcome light would that we ever thus on thy fair banks beloved tigress blessed had lived for spite more barbarous usage my fond father vowed his offspring untransplanted should around him bloom, strangers alike to slavery and shame. Vain was his oath. The evil eye fell on us. How or where the sultan saw, or wherefore fixed on me, I wonder still. His stately vizier to my father sent. A noble price was offered. All in vain I wept and prayed. My mother moaned and sobbed. My father's heart was bowed in silent woe. Resistance were to war with thunderbolts, or with unshielded bosom tempt their burst. They took away my humble robe, they decked me in this gaudier garb. Amid her tears fondly my mother smiled to see me thus arrayed, but my poor father shook his head, and wishful scanned my simpler dress and sighed, while from his parched and burning lid the tear whose gushing eases pride pent found no way. Then came the dreadful hour the parting hour. Oh, tis a fable all that hearts can break. Else were this breast that fearful instant riven, how fast with feeble hands they clung! How called upon Gulzara to forsake them not, my infant sisters! How my father strained me long and silently! My mother, wild with woe, with streaming eyes, on bended knee, implored the transient respite of an hour. Rudely they tore me from her twining arms, by force unclasped. But, oh, I see her now, as the rich embroidered draperies of that gay Araba. I looked my last, and saw her, stone-like, stand with arms wide stretched, white lips, eyes from their sockets starting out, and when the shroud of distance, like death's pall, had veiled me from her sight, the shriek that burst, my mother's shriek, even now it rings to mad mine ear, and shuts out every mocking sound of comfort, which but wastes the breath it spends. No more, I pray. Thy words are spells that raise a phoenix from the woe long hushed and dead, and ruthless memory haunts me with a grief outrivaling thine. I too am motherless. On her, first loved and truest loving, I have gazed, when she gave back no answering glance. We will not think of this. Once more I say, you know not the dear parent still mine own. Would that I ne'er had known his cruelty. Zuleika, interrupting her with dignity. He is my father. Pause. Let that restrain your blind reproach. He is. And to have been thy father should have been earth's noblest, best, by every high and lovely virtue graced which sits on you as twere an heritage. But were he such, or greater, could there be more great, my reverence or my gratitude he might command, but never waken love. There's cause for this. I see it now. You love some other? Is it not so? Gulzara aside. What have I said? Blushes, they say, like crimson-tinted clouds, proclaim the god they veil. Divined I right? I pray you, bid me not reply. I must. 
but prompted by no whim or like caprice speak then and freely maiden i attend Golzara aside thou faltering tongue how shall i tutor thee aloud to utter what this shrinking heart is whispering to conceal why tis no shame zuleika yes there was there is one more than bears the name of kindred whom thou lovest to hear the tale be ours thou lovest and whom whom it is the question i still ask myself by chance such seeming chance of purpose sure as destiny schemes we met one evenfall when farther from our cot than prudence urged or was my wont i wandered sudden from the adjacent wood a fierce young arab rushed from his rude grasp with terror impotent a huntsman rescued me i know not why so often turned my thoughts that night to his protecting arm and reassuring voice but when the memory of my fear arose strangely a joy broke in that chased its gloom as brightly pictured in my dreams that face like guardian saints watching o'er me still next morn while herbs and flowers on neighbouring hills i sought my thoughts were roving where i scarcely knew when lo i raised mine eyes their object stood before me ask me not twere sacrilege to paint the mystic weavings of the chain or breathe how love more closely knit our hearts day after day passed on and still he came more joyful each new meeting and more sad when warned the setting sun that we must part he was not young but in that mellow prime that hath of softness more more tenderness mingling with all youth's fire yet would i not have changed the gathering snows upon his brow for manhood's jettiest lock and all that might have others marred were but new charms in him twas while thus sped the pleasure-laden hours the sultan's mandate came in dizzy haste i sought our old accustomed trysting place but hafed came not hours wore on but brought not him the morrow rose he tarried still another sun must sunder us for ever again i stole despairing forth to look upon that aged tree whose murmuring leaves seemed echoing back the vows which they had heard hopeless upon the earth i flung myself but started up as wound a gentle arm around me hafed yes twas hafed's self the past seemed but a fearful vision this the joyful truth the future's menaces and latent fears and present grief absorbed in that sweet moment's transport but alas cruel when kindness most could cheer for looks all warmth and words all love reproaches met my startled ear reproaches for my joy the sultan's splendour dazzled me he said i willing went to grace my gilded cage he was forgot the flash of joy the last this heart can e'er give forth was quenched at once as lurid lightning leaves the sky more dark my soul grew from its momentary bliss more deeply sad but soon he to my vows gave ear banished transforming frowns and soothed me with bright promises that we should meet should blissful meet again bade me believe swore that i still should be his bride and left me suddenly confused by words so strange but filled with hope deceitful hope thou shown'st a false mirage to cheat my thirsting soul the morrow came but hafed hafed where was he and where his oaths my tale is done or needs no finishing behold me here would that it were longer but less sad and yet what saddest oft most charms the happy ear how strangely new how thrilling must have been the passion that engulfed all other feeling reared in these walls with eyes that never gazed on the face of man except my sire's yet have the books that his indulgence granted me mirrored so well the ecstasy of hearts that linked till death loved on through life unchanged i almost wept 
that I had never known to love. Ask not the fatal knowledge, love, the bright-hued serpent luring but to sting, who for each fancied rapture he imparts bestows the alloy of agonies too real. Oh, rather pray thy breast may never wake to deeper feeling. You are happy, not the wild felicity with passion wed, its hurricanes e'en when most fortunate, of anger, fear, of jealousy, revenge, the storms all turbulence and rage that mix with its delirious bliss, but calm, content of innocence is yours. It were to bid the placid stream that smoothly bears your bark swell into danger-crested billows with the skies in combat but to ask such change. A noise heard behind the scenes. Amrath from behind. Stand back, you saucy slaves! Not to be disturbed? When did my sister with disturbers class her Amarath? Stand back and let me pass. Enter Amarath, who springs into the arms of Zuleika. Good morn, sweet sister mine. Those surly slaves would fain have barred my entrance. Say, I vex you not. Golzara, who appears moved while the boy speaks. That voice. Zuleika returning his embrace. Nor could my Amarath. Golzara aside. Surely that face hath met mine eye before, those tones mine ear. Tis like some faded dream that leaves a shadow misty, undefined, for memory to prey upon. That brow, those speaking eyes, I've seen, and yet not so. Sister, it irks me much that our dear sire still tarries from his home. Sure his return must glad us soon, will it not? We can but hope. Golzara half aside. For my despair. Is this that Persian slave? Tis whispered in the harem bears our sire such loathing hate. Now by his beard, if it be, we shall not, as they argue, vainly woo her love, for were it in courtesy alone, she can but yield that rightful payment, do the debt of ours. Young courtier, thanks thee not to love, unless with adamantine gates my heart were barred, I scarce could dare to hope. Fatima, who has gradually approached. Then lovest thou that which must destroy thy hopes. Golzara, dropping the hand of Amareth. And how? In loving him who banishes the hope, enshrined in every breast that swells its wishful pulses neath the harem's dome, Sultana of that mimic world to reign. For Sultan Suleiman hath often sworn, while yonder boy loved Roxalana's child, his sceptre's heir and sole successor lived, he never bride mongst all his harem flowers would choose, that no new son legitimate might pluck the crescent from his favoured brow, or struggling for the envy diadem, dissension in the peaceful harem wake. Oh, were but were that the only barrier to my desires. No, credit me, what bars may block the pathway to my hopes? The boy shall ne'er be won. Fatima aside. Shall not? <laughs> Tis passing strange. Look then her eagle eyes upon the sun. Enter Katinka. Princess, Ayesha, wife of Mustafa, our noble sultan's favorite fisherman, begs that the luster of your countenance on her and on her lowly offering fall. Ayesha, here again. "'Tis not three days since of some precious trifle last she begged our pleased acceptance. I remember not that to my father or myself she owes these testimonies. This is indeed love unbought. Free entrance to the fateful give. Exit Katinka, who returns with Aisha, bearing a basket of shells tastefully arranged with moss. She kneels to Zuleika behind whose couch Katinka places herself, folding her arms upon her breast. Daughter of Paris, humbly at your feet this loveliest offering of the bounteous wave. Though poor at such an altar, I present, and pray your favor's gracious evidence by its reception to your slave be shown. Zuleika, bowing as she receives the basket. You are not chary of your tokens, nor shall we, by your example, tutored, stint on our just reward. After examining the shelves with Amarath, 
the latter passes them to katinka who remains holding the basket aisha rising and making an inclination of thanks aside ah did she but divine what just reward i asked the boy is there ah again shall disappointment balk my hopes still shall i seek and seek in vain no though the search were lengthened to eternity alone my life in yielding i relinquish thee thou sweet pursuit of stern revenge Gulzara to zelenka coming forward this morn the perfumed wind that through my lattice stole with incense breathing blossoms of the lime was laden and i looked upon a grove where rainbow pinioned birds shone in the sun and songsters clad in humbler garb poured forth their melody unseen while murmuring bees that vocal with their plaintive music made the wind seemed whispering of my father's home your kind permission princess let me beg to unattended wander in these woods there is balm in solitude and nature whose boasted virtue i would willing test our pleasures hoard we not so miserly as to enlarge our stock by ravishing from your poor store in captive holding you Kulzara bends in acknowledgment and is preparing to depart dear sister give me leave taking Kulzara's hand i will with you come then there's something in that soft tone which which i nay this is madness frenzy i'll not think upon it let us together forth exit Gulzara, leading emrath aisha aside allah is great unhoped unlooked-for joy he goes with her and she alone at last vengeance indeed is mine i knew it would come i have not waited not untiring watched for chance to baffle me revenge ha ah exit on the opposite side end of act one act two of gulzara or the persian slave by anna cora moat this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org act two scene one a grove attached to the gardens of the palace a fountain in the midst enter gulzara and amareth promenading why look you still so sad while through my veins the soft and vivifying breath of spring impels the sport of blood in gleeful dance and buoys my spirits up till most they seem to mock at yours why are you still weighted down by heaviness or more oppressive thought your spring of life most favoured amarath hath brought the lovelier spring of happiness mine of the verdure of content hath robbed my path and left the winter's barren frost and chilling gloom within my heart Aisha steals in and conceals herself behind the fountain. I would I were a magician now, that I might use mine art to see thee smile. I'd part with some dear pleasure of my own to give it to thee. Aisha aside. Spend thrift, cherish more cheerily thy joys. Who says thou'lt not be bankrupt soon? But I, so generous of my poor possessions, would not be, nor to thy blithesome breast transfer the sole exchange I have my burdening hoard of griefs and if thou wouldst i scarce can think they'd weigh so heavily as does this cloak to-day that more oppresses me and clogs my feet and checks my panting breath than ever did suffering yet let me relieve thee oft unburdened be that shoulder long the load that it must bear will gather but too soon aisha aside heed her well boy there spoke the prophet's voice were i of the three storied fates but one should yonder calm and cloudless firmament the emblem of thy glorious destiny be aisha aside were such thine office shouldst thou sistership with me avow for i the darkened thread would weave and to thy sunny sky bring clouds else with the blackness of mine own unpaid i would that she were hence 
how swift they fly these precious moments. They must scape me not. What would I do? I tremble at myself. Tremble. If there be trembling, it must be the Sultan Suleiman that trembles, and at me. Look now your last, young prince. I'll part them swift. Runs out, and in a feigned voice calls loudly behind the scenes. Gulzara! Haste! Gulzara, hear you not? Who calls? What voice was that? Again. Aisha from behind. Gulzara, instant to the palace haste. Zuleika summons and impatient waits. Adieu, dear Amarath. I must away. One kiss. Adieu. Exit hastily. Stay, stay, I follow thee. As he is following, Aisha runs in the other side and seizes him. You follow me. Mine. Mine at last. Ha <laughs> ha. Woman, what mean you by this frantic jest? Let loose your hold. You must with me. With you? And wherefore? Know you who I am, woman? It is the Sultan's son you dare profane by such rude grasp. The Sultan's son. <laughs> I dote upon the sound. The Sultan's son is mine. Those words have nerved my hands with double strength. You rave. Away. Let loose my arm. Be gone. Yes, I am quickly gone, and thou with me. I have no time for dull detail, to make the snare seem pleasant around the tangled bird. I am no magpie, cheated of my prey, discoursing of its worth. We tarry not. Endeavoring to drag him out. Mashallah, she is mad. What shall I do? Ye unseen guardians of the innocent, that people the pure air, protect me. To her. Forget you then? This thinly sheltered grove close to the palace of my father stands. His slaves, surrounding every portal, wait one cry of mine, like lightning to transform the victim and the victor. Me to rescue, you to punishment consign. Must I use force? I warn you, loose ere it be too late. Your hold. <laughs> Do then your worst, and test if gorged delight hath ears for shrieking misery. Come on. Amarath struggling. Jafar! Hassan! Help! Zuleika! Sister! Allah! They come not! Hassan! Help! Oh, help! There is no help. For months I have prepared this hour, languished to see it come. Far more than shipwrecked mariner longs for gleam of land. I am not mad, or grief hath turned my brain. And if it has, why, thou art reason's light, for thou art the revenge that will soothe my grief. Ah, <sighs> and thou art mine. The sentinel that guard yon secret pathway to the shore, upon whose rugged bosom stands our cabin, is my brother. The vile slaves you call to aid, on wildering draughts and dainties that I brought, are in the palace reveling. Beliefst thou now? Resist not. We must hence. Oh, stay. What would you with me? I have harmed you not. He has, of whom you are a part, and you are but the vulnerable avenue that guides my sure-aimed blow to him. My father? You do him strangely wrong. His name hath been another name for goodness. Spare his son. Kneeling. You turn unpityingly away. You drag me hence. What, to imbue those woman hands in blood? To snatch a life but just begun? And make your own far worse than a thousand times expiring? Racked by torturing remorse? I wrong you with the thought. You will not do it. Have pity. I'll be secret. They'll not know what deed I now beseech you to forgo. You yield? You will? You do. And I'm free. As he is starting up to go out, she detains him. When breathes my own unhappy son that word, your lips shall to the sound respond, but not till then. You do not mean these menaces. You'd frighten me with a threat. You shall have all you wish, and for all wishes granted. Give! 
Give but my ravished liberty. Sweet sister, sister, you cannot hear my voice, and you will call upon me when my ear is deaf. Pity! Again kneeling. And pity to Zuleika, hear me. Oh, she will die with woe. You could not look on those sweet eyes, glazed over in lifelessness, those lips but laid that spoke so gently. Even to you, their roses purpling, livid grown a touch of death. That seals their tones for I. And I the cause? Impatiently. Leave me. I must be free. Yes, I must to my sisters. Hassan! Slaves! Your cries, that harmless pierce the mocking air, taunt with their echoing, powerless as some poor bird that against its wiry prison beats a mangled head. Your struggles can as soon displace the iron bars of callousness that barricade my heart. Your prayers are wind, your tears salt drops on marble falling. Cease, we linger long. You must away. Struggling to drag him out. Not yet. No help? Mercy! Mercy! Zuleika, oh my sister, hear your Amarath. Zuleika! Exuant. End of Act Two. Act Three of Gulzara, or the Persian Slave, by Anna Cora Moet. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One, The Chamber of Zuleika. Zuleika in a careless attitude upon her couch, her head buried in her hands as though in grief. Fatima bending over her. Be comforted, dearest Zuleika. Give not way to such absorbing grief. He will be found. He will. He must. Zuleika, looking up. Oh, that your words were prophecies, and entered my soul like holy breathings of an oracle. How shall I meet my father's angry sorrow? How live to greet him with I have no brother? Will he not speechless wish that tongue which strikes his own horror dumb? O'erwhelmed by such ill tidings, will he not their bearer loathe and shun me as some odious thing? And thou, poor Amorath, thou sufferest now or art beyond the pale of earthly anguish shall i never see those frolic beaming eyes those mirth embellished lips till yester morn by no rude sigh profaned that noble brow so like thy sire's impossible there is too sudden loss one soothing left for shocked reality shrinks from her task to point how venomed are the shafts of woe reserves until we grow accustomed to the pain the slow withdrawal of her fearful veil i scarce can think this blow though it crushed me real though it rankle scarce believe my wound last night i heard his merry voice and thought i felt the loving pressure of his tiny hand and woke to dread twould never more grasp mine Oh, what an age of torment hath been compassed in the short breathing space since yester morn, when last he bounded joyous from my sight. Torment indeed, that asks short space to sow its thorns. No dial plate hath grief. One hour oft centers woes that might embitter years. But ere he conquer you, for combat arm strong hope to vanquish him had we some clue however small to trace his steps to come think you beneath affliction's pressure i have bowed me calmly down and struggle not its weight to lighten orders for strict search are given their speedy for wardens myself have aided not one caution is forgot but tis when that 
which in the body's toil bids the mind cease its torturing is done that we revert with double consciousness back to our most forgotten misery enter katinka with hasty reverence bearing a cloak katinka hurriedly i come sultana from jiafar who zuleika starting up my brother quick what news allah be praised he is not found you know not where he is a venomed arrow galls your sorrowing slave whose lips unblessed must chase those crowding hopes we have but found this cloak which you well know and in the chamber of the persian slave gulzara heaven she drops the cloak which she has taken from katinka gulzara and with her slow wandering in your favorite grove the prince was last beheld about the hour of noon the slaves describe her running hurriedly along the corridor replying not to their loud inquiries she came to me feigning i summoned and with troubled mien requested then permission to withdraw this cloak gives strong suspicion of her guilt the kistler aga's orders have been given that she be seized galzara guilty seized it cannot be war ever crime so fair a mask it is beyond belief and what could be her aim princess recall you not when heedlessly i said young amarath to all aspiring hopes whose wished-for goal was suleiman's sultana to become stood barrier her haughty answer was he never should be barrier to hers is this not then her executed threat but her strange tale her wretchedness her love for the unknown engrossing every thought e'en love himself doth meet a fearful foe when high ambition fronts him in the field and who shall even vouch her story true she who were capable of this dread deed were of all feigning and all artifice must i believe this horror was i so deceived oh that conviction struck me not whom shall i henceforth trust when the stars look bright shall i not picture them transformed to burning brands to scathe the admiring world gozara rushes in and throws herself at the feet of zuleika princess zuleika save protect thy slave thy plausive words embolden me to fly to thee what would they with me whither would they force me what what have i done a deed so dark my tongue revolts to give it breath a horror-struck credulity would glad refuse to belief oh then believed not thou would that i still could say i did not off thou treacherous thing impersonation base of those brow picturings of fraud that link a houri's face and a serpent's form o oh, like the baleful caramina which unsheathes its sweet buds to the sun to poison e'en the freshening zephyrs that promote its growth thy venom hast thou thrown around her whom thy seeming move to meliorate thy lot of what am i accused zuleika scornfully thou playest well the role of innocence but we will aid thy memory galzara to recall who yester morning in the lime grove strayed alone with my lost brother galzara startled amarath zuleika aside ha she is struck alas it is too true to her who left that grove forever cursed retreat without the boy and hurried thence and feigned i summoned striving by pretended haste her guilty agitation to conceal from questioning slaves permission to retire then praying in her chamber barred shut out the kindly throng who'd cheer her solitude from that fell hour one image gladdening all our eyes has met their longing gaze no more but 
mock me. In thy chamber, ill-concealed, this guilt-disclosing cloak, its mantling folds, hath shrunk from round the crime-stained form of her who last beheld its wearer. Have you heard? You stand accused of— Gulzara, who, while Zuleika was speaking, has slowly and indignantly risen from her knees— Murder, just Allah. Zuleika aside. Guilt overpowers her. Why gaze you thus with such abhorring eyes upon me? Tis, tis false. Yourself you do not credit this. My fears but cheated me to think you did. Tis but some time-beguiling sport. Yes, tis some mockery. The mockery's in you, that would insult our presence by this show of feeling, aping injured innocence. Where is my brother? Answer to thyself, if conscience leave thee power, and then to me. Gulzara, after a pause, during which she seems too agitated to speak. Call thy wretchedness which wrung my soul when morn's unwelcome beam chastened visioned joys? Deemed I that misery which was but grief, undarkened by dishonor's withering touch, unlinked with this most foul polluting stain? Murder, I dream. Some nightmare of my brain possesses me. I sleep not. Twill not off. Murder, thou meanst it not. Oh, couldst thou think these hands, which were inured perchance to toil, but taught to be more used to deeds of good, could close their sinews in this fiendish act? These eyes, which morn and eve have bent their gaze on Allah's throne, nor shrunk from that dread orb, which through those casements scanned the inmost soul, could mark the writhing of the anguished frame, the quiver of the blackening lip, before the unwilling breath, struggling half spent to hold its beauteous tenement depart? These ears, so wont to listen to sweet counselings of good from parent lips, could hear unmoved the cry, the choking prayer, the shuddering groan? This heart! where, if the laboured care avail of youthful guardians, husbandmen of love, were virtue, piety, truth, the first fruit sown, think you could yield forth such a poisoned crop as to conceive this dark, unhallowed deed? You wrong not me so much as nature, who could render such abortion possible. Zuleika aside. Can this be treachery? My heart convinced would warrant every word. But I'll try her further. Bethink thee well, Galzara, and confess. Know you the dungeon for its tenant waits? The dungeon? Ha! Huh. The gloom of Eblis cursed. The noisome dumps to chill my shaking bones. The suffocating air. The excluded light. That common boon which reptiles may enjoy. The lonely hours. They fright you. Well, they may. For they conjure up your crime to rise most fearful of all visitants and haunt you. Gulzara, proudly and passionately. They'll conjure up my innocence, will give me strength to scorn their puny power, and mock at thronging horrors which I merit not. There's almost crime upon the lips would brand me with. I did misjudge myself. I have no fear. Injustice lends this sinking form her staff of indignation, and I scorn your might. Confine, and torture, shackle, what you will, do with this helpless frame. You cannot touch the soaring soul whose stings alone can pierce, which spurns your threatened dungeon walls, and revels in the hallowed freedom, born of innocence, not all your force can chain. Yes, to the dungeon, Guiltless I defy its deadliest terrors and your cruelty. Exit, followed by Katinka. End of Act Three Act Four of Gulzara, or the Persian Slave, by Anna Cora Moet. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org.
ACT IV. SCENE I. A FISHERMAN'S HUT. AISHA seated on a rude chair, mending nets and singing. AMARATH sitting pensively on a low stool, his head leaning on his hand, his eyes fixed on the ground. AMARATH, after a pause. Where art thou now, sweet sister? In thy bower, weeping alone, and starting wildly, like some guilty thing, at every footstep. Lest it be that one thou dreadest, yet longest to hear. My father's! And that meeting, O oh, Aisha, picture to thyself that hour, and say if in thy pitying bosom beats a heart with savageness to cause such woe, think on her trembling, voiceless, when she meets my father's eye, and dares not fondly fling her soft arms around his neck. And when this blow that fells the sturdy oak is given, O oh, think upon the reed, already bowed, twill crush, think but of this, and then... I do think on it. Rejoice to paint the scene, dwell over it, more dotingly than erst thy enamoured king hung over his chisel's labour as it sprung to life. Like him, I prayed, like him, behold my wish. How wilt thou mourn, dear father, and those eyes, long moistureless, will they not weep? Such bitter tears as he made flow from mine, that sapped the rosy line in those wan cheeks, falling like ice upon my heart, and froze the healthful current of its noblest feelings, till, petrified, it grew insensible to mercy's voice or pity's hand, which knocked in vain for entrance or response. This was his work, thy sire's. Surely he wronged you not? Not wronged? Oh, no. They'll say that justice guides the foot that crushes the unsightly worm, unconsciously offending. Let them, then, pronounce, if in the serpent's vengeful sting there be not equity, and call me just. Rising. Amrith rising and following her to the front of the stage. Thy words are sunless mists, whose somberness perplex me more. Thine ills relating, lend the beam that shall disperse these wildering clouds. I will, and to thy youthful ears strike awe. Reared in the palace, daughter of a slave whose tuneful zebek charmed your father's ear. For years I served the sultan faithfully. In token of his favor, Yet a child, he did bestow me on the fisherman, young Mustafa, whom well your father loved. We were not rich, and yet most happy, for I did possess that which outvalued all the luxuries of wealth. One only son. Woe is the day, that evil day, when stole the sport of urchin from my watchful eye, and in an off committed trespass fell whose penalty the sultan had proclaimed a painful death the fierce chaushas dragged him trembling and dismayed unknowing scarce his crime before the sultan's judgment seat thither in haste i flew and at his feet implored his mercy for my child he seemed to heed my prayer but when I hopeful ceased, did mock me with the answer that his life was spared. His life! They had not dared to shed an infant's blood. And what was now that life, without the joys that give it worth? Or mine, when set the star that lighted it? I prayed for more. He sternly bade them lead me thence. My boy to prison. Banishment. I know not where. The fiat had gone forth. Unheeded, my frenzied rage. They bore him from.
from my sight. <sighs> I cannot think for lasting punishment. This absence so prolonged. The cares of war have from my father's memory raised your son. <sighs> Not him from mine. That hour, I vowed revenge and fixed mine eyes on you through whom tis found. Again I sought the palace, but my tears, the scorching fever of revenge had quenched, ever some trivial token bearing, forgetful seemed of which all else forgot. The sultan's absence in this Persian war my hidden purpose favored. Of the grove, my brother being sentinel, through him I planned that deed to do what now is done. And must my life like base-born peasants pass within these walls, as though no royal blood swelled proudly in my veins? These walls, perchance, are paradise to those that echo now the groans of my lost boy. You will not be so cruel. True, your hapless son, my sire consigned to punishment, but twas for some misdeed committed, though unmeant. I harmed you not. Zuleika never injured you. Yet strikes your poniard at the breast of both. Together will we wither, though apart. You could not bear to see me pine and pine. Day after day, grow pallid by your side, and as the tree whose roots some secret worm attacks, thus slowly die. While your stretched arm could pluck away destruction, and new life restore, then give me back my liberty. Aisha, aside. Ah, oh, he rings me to the soul, an infant's tongue once more within these walls. I wonder not it moves me. Could I... Could I get thee hence, thou woman's weakness? To thy puling voice mine ears are deaf. Thou frightened conscience, back! Thou shake me my purpose. Almost now hath shaken. But no, the image of my injured boy, writhing in chains that wound his tender flesh, rises reproachfully to blast my sight and nerves me with the strength of fiends, perchance. And then, the thought of Suleiman's despair. It is too sweet, this chalice filled with joys from his lips stolen, though it inebriate with nectar, fallen angels call revenge. I'll yield it not to pleading pity's prayer. Aisha, dear Aisha. Not one word. I have already heard too much. Beware. Resumes her seat and work. No help, then? No escape? Here must I die? It may be, but not like the foolish hair in fear expiring, with no struggle made for liberty, no effort, or to dry the flood that for me now is swelling, or to give it better cause to rise. Sits down. I've heard my father say what city's strength has failed to conquer. Stratagem must win. I'll think on this. He muses, during which time Aisha sings. Your boy, his father lives? He does. But dwells perchance afar? On his cast nets the sun hath twice its lengthening shadows thrown. And from his stay, I augur, he has met with some success. I hourly wait his boat. Amrath aside. I must myself, or forge the key that opens my prison door, or perish for my lack of skill. Ponders again. I have it. Well, it can but fail. Rises slowly from his seat and approaches the window in the back scene. Aisha sharply. What would you? Only while the laggard time from his slow pace. Aside and archly. By quickening my own. After looking out of the window intently for a moment. That boat, how swift it nears. It must be he. A man springs out. Aisha rises. Aisha, look. Nay, now he's hid behind yon rocks. 
"'Tis he. I go to greet him." Rushes out. I to greet my liberty. I'm free. Father, thy tutoring wasn't lost. Yon door leads to the secret path that barred behind me. Ere the swiftest foot could gain the palace by the common road, I shall be safe within their shielding arms. Rejoice, my sister. Father, I am yours again. Runs out and is heard to bolt the door behind him. After a moment, Aisha re-enters. I saw nor boat nor man. What meant you, boy? Looks round. <gasps> what? Gone? Not here? Where art thou, Amarath? <gasps> Allah protect me, he has fled. Exit running, is heard to try the door and returns despairingly. Bard? Bard? <gasps> oh, simple head, outwitted by a child, a puny boy. <gasps> I'm lost. Too surely all will be discovered. Death's cold arms are spread to clasp their victim. Fool, to heed his words. Yet he is happy, free. How can I mourn? I was not strong of purpose as I thought myself. Already had remorse dispatched her furies dire to lacerate my breast. <sighs> He's free, restored. This crime will haunt me not. I can but share the prison of my boy, or in a darker close my weary eyes. Where shall no vision of his misery rack my sleep? They shall not drag me hence. I have deserved, and bravely will I meet my fate. As she is going, stops, and turns slowly round. Farewell, my little hut. What is it to me? I never shall behold you more. For, ah, uh, he that so jocund made your rustic walls hath bade them long ago adieu. <sighs> Though it shelter now, it is true, a childless and a wifeless master. But since this deed hath darkened all my soul, it would but tarnish his pure love. Farewell. Exit. Scene two. A dungeon, night, Golzara on a pallet of straw, a lamp burning. Thou potent sorceress night, how terrible thou art! The shadow of thy mantle veils the direst deeds, but conjures shades to strike their guilty doer with a pulseless fear. He sees in thee the accomplice of his crime, and when lulled memory would sleep, thou art the grim Promethean vulture to his rest. That goadest conscience with the enactment dread, Of horrors thou concealst. The glossing beam of daylight brings thy calming opiate, Charmed forgetfulness. But night, why think on this? Can night bedim the brow of innocence? And yet these awe-inspiring walls, Rising, That people with shadowy forms and grotesque images, My solitude, the desert stillness, all appall and fright me, but tis only fear, who, though she seem to wear guilt's garment, is with conscience searching stings not armed for me. The doom of crime, not its remorse, is mine. It's doom indeed. The fearful trial waits. Nerveless they lead me forth, shrinking, unveiled, before the low, reviling throng I stand. My lips with shame and fear together cling. My cleaving tongue denies me utterance. Hark! The maddening shout of guilty breaks my trance. They near, the frightful executioners. The bowstring tightens round my struggling neck. But no, not that. Tis not the mortal pang I tremble to await, endure. 
but tis this deathful blow sure aimed will strike through me to other hearts oh tis that they must writhe in anguish far beyond the agonies i bear mother i know thou wilt not live to sorrow o'er thy child's dishonour father this arrow in thy side that may not kill will goad at every step thou thought'st it woe when envied and caressed i mournful left thine humble roof but oh what earthly sound will compass now thy suffering when thou know'st thy daughter's spotless name defiled with crime that crime atoned by ignominious death heaven will they believe the accusers no their honest hearts will spurn the base deceit but this foul stain will endless cleave to them as the seared brand that scathes the guilty brow and rear a target for scorn's bended bow o oh, gentle patience tutor me to bear these dire accumulated ills the dark futurity is shrouded from my view but the high mission from above that rules its mysteries cannot err and to its will i yield me now sinks again on her pallet and composes herself as though to sleep the drawing of a bolt heard from without so soon the bolt draws back it is my savage jailer comes to lead me to the dreaded trial oh that this foul air were not so clogged that i could breathe more free alas that very breath i soon may cease to draw what matters it starts up he comes i am prepared enter zuleika gulzara gulzara who at first fears to look round but starts at the sound and rushes forward zuleika checking herself come you to comfort or upbraid for either bootless your errand since to comfort you must want the power and to upbraid do lack the cause i came for neither but to pray to exhort gulzara to avow what shall i say the madness that gave birth to this most monstrous crime i've heard that it is their wont in lands where tyrants reign and subjects tremble on wheels to break or torture on the rack the haplessly accused till the crazed wretch grown forth confession of black deeds he ne'er committed princess are you coldly come the executioner to test if i shall prove as weak i pardon you the taunt despite conviction reason everything i cannot think you guilty to this last degree not not of murder speak that word again it is the heaven-sent nocta drop curing the plague upon my vitals praying oh i am innocent you own it there is one when doomed gulzara breathes no more and the dread story of her guilt is told in loathing one who will proclaim the tale is false you trust me i must henceforth live mistrusting all my senses would approve if i did not then it is the bowstring but the bar that draws to open paradise i do not ask for life what is to die without the stain that made death terrible tis but to endure a passing pang, to feel the last cold quiver of the limbs then sink to rest that fear and care no more disturb they who have suffered in the soul shall own that transient pain a jest to agonies the spirit must endure one boon i crave when ruthless slaves have done their duty when in bloody sockets glare the starting eyes and the last stifling sigh is choked ere to scape when mocking menials aweless shall insult the freezing corpse with merry ribaldry oh as thou hopes to cross alcerat's height with foot unfaltering promise me zuleika my aged parents from thy hand shall know i perished innocent as when they last called down a blessing on their guileless child think not of this all shall be well with thee but my poor amurath twas in the grove we parted nor have i beheld him since he left you then rather i fled from him warned by a distant voice to haste to you he followed not not as i think this is some plot tis very strange musing it shall be solved and happily grant mahomet 
but if for me too late remember then my boon too late it will not be how i will plead with my loved father and bid me not hope think not the sultan can be pacified by words the wrath of power slakes itself in blood alone and cooled shrinks from the fount that quenched its burning when my lips are mute thine may awake a sigh but will not more then weaker than the venal slave that makes us weep for higher they've grown my father's name hath planted terror in the bravest hearts yet i have seen his cheek grow white and his eyes brim o'er at the history of a fictitious woe and deem you he will look unmoved on real fear not i know that thou art guiltless and will risk my life to shield thee now adieu adieu zuleika it doth well beseem such gentle purity as thine to come dispensing peace and beauty in the soft and mellowing light of virtue's gilding sun making more beautiful here at thy feet i breathe my beggar thanks thou need'st them not were might of sceptre mine how poor my power to tender thee reward thy recompense hath been to taste the sweets of that first joy by nature i by heaven itself loved best the ecstasy of making others blessed Gulzara remains kneeling as zuleika exits end of act four Act Five of Gulzara or The Persian Slave by Anna Corrett Moat. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Five, Scene One Night. The grove brilliantly illuminated. Enter Zuleika and Fatima bearing baskets of flowers this spot will but increase your gloom why bid its shade be lighted like a festive bower when springs from hence the mist that clouds your path let us away Solika, dearest i would try the magic of my lute but here twere powerless gently attempting to lead her away go if thou wilt but me twill soothe to wander here where fancy spreads her magic wing and wafts my brother's voice to haunt the spot with tones e'en than thy lute's more soft as florets o'er the loved one's grave affection's hand a mournful tribute strews so will we consecrate the hallowed earth that bore his footprints last they strew the flowers the very wind with his sweet breath is redolent and fills my heart with gladness strange and undefined a pleasure waked by hand invisible joys herald not himself but comes he when proclaimed i know gozara guiltless lives he then my brother yes this heart replies but doubts still in be hope their banisher cherish that son of a chaotic world when the dark future frights our weeping eyes were it not kind hope for thy fictitious light that lumens half its memphian gloom we long for present death to scape the ills to come which energized by hope to bravely meet is to disarm you've said full oft methinks and truly too the grey-haired dervishes whose converse i so love almost had made a moralizer of your fatima then too the moral that she draws from these your late afflictions lend a heedful ear clouds that to-day obscure the frowning sky to-morrow give it lovelier to the eye so shall selika's griefs that great appear but fade to make her joys restored more dear a noise heard without as of rejoicing and the name of emereth frequently repeated what cry is that it swells in joy and ha ah, this name amurath amurath again it rings 
Oh, Fatima, my tottering feet give way, I sink. Hist. Now the sound is hushed. Fatima, supporting her. You tremble. Be composed. Shall happiness by her advancing shadow bow to earth what woes on gentle grasp hath failed to crush? Amareth, from behind. What mean these lights, my sister? Speak, my sister. He rushes in amid loud acclamations and throws himself into the arms of Zuleika. He lives! He lives! Brother! Brother! It is! Tis he indeed! Putting him from her to look at him. So fit yourselves, ye eyes! Long fasting! Feast ye now upon his face! Sweet sister! Loved Zuleika, once more yours! This transport kills your happy Amara. Nay! Thou hast been a century dead to me, and welcome as one mourned within the grave, uprisen from the tomb art come. Where hast thou been? In sorrow equal to thine own, cooped in most rustic cage. But I cajoled my jailer, to myself gave liberty. Night, I scarce know how, unless some guardian spirit, moved by love of thee, guided my doubtful steps. And brought thee safe. What multitudes of thanks shall crowd the gates of paradise for this? Where hast thou been? Who was the savage hand could give thee pain, mine own, my Amaroth? Oh, dearly shall they rue this hour. Who was it, and how? Along the secret path, when fled Gulzara at your hest, Aisha bore... Not Mustafa's fair-featured wife. The slave whom Suleiman's long favor would enrich. Oh, seeming, seeming, what a cheek thou art! While triumphed base Aisha in her crime, Gulzara, in loathsome vault in jailed, makes us, in our supposed sagacity, tyrants and blinded dupes of outward show. Gulzara dungeoned? Sister, mean you that? the gentle Persian. You permitted this? Speed, speed, to burst her shameful bonds. Myself I will entreat her pardon for this wrong. Going. Stay, greedy brother of mine. Fain would I share thy rapture, basking in the light of hers. Say not I ask too much. Katinka waits to lead her hither. Claps her hands. Enter Katinka. Free the youthful Persian. And to our presence guide her speedily. Bid her not grieve, but give not voice the joy that awaits her when she here before us stands. Exit, Katinka. How could suspicion light on her? Alas, twas feared ambition prompted her the deed. She was forewarned, while lived the Sultan's heir, must Suleiman be Sultanalis. Sudden you disappeared. This tell-tale cloak was in her chamber found. Wandering alone with her, the household slaves beheld you last. Chance was her criminator, and not we. The future shall efface the past, but thou, art thou indeed restored, my Amarath? Can I believe it is no dream that gives thee to my longing eyes? If tis, we'll sleep, for I... And mingle with the waking world no more. Enter Katinka. Princess, she comes, but with no smile dimpling her pallid cheek. Fatima to Amareth. Your presence may too suddenly surprise her. Joy hath killed what grief but gave a sharper sense of being. As though death's angel loved to snatch the soul in bliss, but fickly shunned its hour of woe. I pray you, then, withdraw a while. Amarath complainingly. My thanks, good lady Hakim. Your prescription suits me ill. Not see the transport that my flight, which was not the easiest, help to cause? Nay, shake not thy sapient head. I must remain. Yet since your potion is too large, we'll halve it by your leap. It shall be so. Her will I safely see, but she not me. At least not while I can restrain myself. Conceals himself among the trees. Enter Golzara dejectedly. Ever so mournful, sad Golzara, I had hoped the converse of tonight dispelled your gloom. Not mournful, but 
with thoughts upturned to where they may be soon forever fixed you are oppressed but quick upon the hills of grief treads happiness to chase her back and said i not golzara ay this night i knew your innocence you did believe my protestations and i thank you for it i now do more i know them to be true golzara agitatedly you have no proof the prince your brother is amrath leaping into her arms hear dear golzara and proclaims aloud your innocence oh holy prophet i had scarcely dared to pray for this unharmed safe art thou angel boy o oh, father mother lift up your heads again and now come death near as before i fear thee not now if i yield me yours tis not in ignominy first shall a life of happiness atone for all the ills we have occasioned on you Gozara, gazing at him again that tone how thrills it through my soul as something long familiar to these ears the song whose words forgot haunts with its air was ever brow moulded so seemingly like his or is it that these eyes so oft have wept to view that face once more they find a visioned semblance in all loveliness enter katinka ayesha to your gracious presence praise admission princess shall we entrance give unsummon comes she then know she her guilt discovered direst punishment awaits its perpetrator lead her hither exit katinka sister i pity her in sooth i do and she hath heavy grief endured and heavier would give thee my cherished brother pardonless the hand that menaced thee one minute's pain your pity you but waste i shall not mine enter katinka followed by aisha who kneels to zelenka in contrition her head bent down and her hands folded upon her breast come you within the lion's den to tempt his wrath your guilt had been already voiced and tarries not its retribution just great is the sultan where should i conceal this faded head to scape his anger but i do beseech you to hear what scourges lashed me to this frenzied deed i had not strength if favour chanced to give my will insane its wished for execution ere he escaped i wavered shrank his pleadings touched my heart boast you a heart that with such mortal pangs wring that of others you who ruthless raised o'er this offenceless being the rude arm of violence the thought with a wild fire stranger till now kindles my burning veins quick take her hence within a dungeon chain without one glimmer of that sun whose face her crime pollutes mutes for her guardians and her ear deaf to my brother's pleadings let no sound of human melody beguile away with her not yet one instant grant not till you hear me twas your sire not i performed this deed his cruelty urged me to it would you wake mercy in the daughter's breast attaining with malignant charge the father kindness to you to earth were cruelty and fostering the adder vice to bear each fenceless bosom to its fang be gone judge me not harshly not by me wilt thou be judged but hope no leniency enough yet hear her sister only hear her tale you supplicate for her injured shall the vulture find a wounded dove its shield you cannot loathe me as i hate myself hate what i am but mourn what i have been rising princess six changeful moons ago i would have started horror-struck as thou at thought of what hath so debased me now but time and despot circumstances work woeful change i had a son 
one only son. He was care's certain solace, joy's sweet messenger, the focus whence diverged each ray of bliss that lighted my existence. List whose hand snatched that soul beam and darkened it forever. A new decree whose violation brought the penalty of death. The ill-starred boy unconscious broke. Your father, at my prayer, mock merciful. His life, not pardon, grants. Whether in jail, enslaved, or banished. What his punishment I knew not. No, not now. But sorrow over the knowledge of how they bore the struggling, weeping infant from my sight, and with him every kindly feeling nursed within this breast, leaving to frantic grief that seeming comforter. Revenge! Thenceforth it was my household god. I was transformed. Not tigress ravished of her young was more athirst to glut her rage. From my own heart, I knew how well your father loved his son, and I vowed to plunge the dagger in his breast, with which he recklessly stabbed mine. That I was baffled, I rejoice, and rather now would meet the fate that waits me than have lived more darkly doomed with the memory of this crime. Zuleika, turning from her. It is too black, too dreadful. Thou art safe, my brother, but thy danger frights me still. Aisha, slowly advancing, and again kneeling. I scarcely dare implore your mercy. Yet... Reflect upon the wrongs that to this deed were goading me. Bid me reflect upon the deed itself. My father's agony, my brother's pain. I have no mercy left, no pardon. <gasps> Tis a fearful thing to die. Is it not more fearful to deserve to die? Had even the noblest of frail mortals his deserts, Oh, who would then escape rebuke? Gentle Sotana, pity my affliction. No more. You had unpoised the righteous scales of justice. I command you peace. Let me entreat you, sister. Grant me this boon. Never before have I beheld your eyes so stern, your brow knit with such threatening frowns. Who harmed my brother never should behold it otherwise. Yet freely from my heart, I do forgive her. If you sorrowed much in wanting me, then what her agony, when her loved son was rudely snatched away? I never did refuse your lightest wish, but plead not, brother, now for this I must not grant, and will not hearken to. I wronged Golzara by too hasty judgment. My atonement let me to the supplicant transfer, imploring that you pardon her. Spare me your prayers. When his have been withstood, I shall not listen to your voice. Gozara advancing. List then to mine, she to the dungeon you condemned, incarcerated for another's crime, thrust for whose eyes anticipated death beseeches you to let her sufferings pass as this repentant one's, and pardon her. Remember, power when robed in leniency, not strength, wears loveliest semblance when displayed. To pardon penitence, not punish guilt, bespeaks true nobleness of majesty. And justice finds her thongs oft powerless to chase in hearts the smile of goodness wins to imitate herself. Then emulate, in clemency to this your slave, the sway of pitying heaven, whose high prerogative most needed, most employed. Is not to pardon? Had I a thousand tongues, Zuleika, each should plead with hers. Should they plead in vain? Zuleika, first turning to one, and then the other. Brother, Golzara, you have conquered. Rise, Aisha, and thy future life, not words, proclaim thy gratitude. Thou art 
forgiven. <gasps> Let me still kneel until the bounty is complete. Give not a life that's valueless, withholding what imparts its worth. My child shall be restored. <gasps> Joy! Joy too great to bear! <gasps> My son restored! His blue eyes once again, the heaven of my own, his prattling tongue, making my glad heart to its music dance. <laughs> oh, princess, sunk as I am by this act beneath humanity, I shall not prove them senseless beasts more thankless. And there is a Roman tale that memorates of old a hungered lion, Moved by gratitude, who, recognizing, shrank from offered prey. Nor on the well-remembered hand that erst did cure his wound, appeased his famishing. That tale is graven on my heart. A life of faithful service shall express the thanks that I have no tongue to speak, but whose warm flood overflows my grateful eyes. <laughs> I need them not. Who doeth well finds in the act itself his actions noblest recompense. I share your pleasure, dearest sister, and almost had borne the anguish of dread yesterday for this sweet hour's ecstasy. And I re-echo all your bliss, and only need Golzara's pardon of defaming doubts to make complete my own. Freely tis yours. Aside. And I while every lip and every eye beams in the sunny light of happiness, stronger, by contrast, seem the shadows o'er mine own. Hafed, while other sorrows filled my breast, almost wert thou forgot. They pass away, but leave the cankering thought of thee that cannot part, eternal in their stead. Enter Katinka, bearing a scroll, kneeling as she presents it. Great Suleiman sends to Zuleika greeting. How pleasure, when she opes her hand, pours down her gifts. Sister, read quick, what says our sire? His foot is on his enemy's breast. Gian bin Gian Agesis guards his form. His brow enwreathed, victorious he returns. Returns? When may we look for him? Soleka, still reading. Tomorrow's dawn. Golzara, aside. So soon? Yet why this foolish trembling? Is this face more fair than those by smiles at court his lightest looks made beauteous, that he e'er should waste a glance upon the hapless Persian? Sister, you smile. What says he more? Can I read right? Reads aloud. Garland your walls, summon your choirs of sweetest warblers, sandal swift anew the winged feet of your loveliest dancers, all festivities beseeming to his state, prepare to welcome Suleiman's newest bride. How's this? Reads on, apparently much astonished. There is some witchery in these times. Golzara, with tomorrow's dawn we haste to meet the bridegroom Sultan. Whom dost thou think? Our glad hands shall as proud Sultana deck. Gulsara pauses, looks round, and her eyes resting smiling on Fatima. Gazelle-eyed Fatima, perchance. Nay, now, you err in very modesty. Mingle thy joy with ours. It is Gulsara's self. Gulsara? Oh. I. Oh, what a sport of fate have I become. Spare me your merriment. Soon I will strive to share your mirth, but now I am too sad, too weakened by distress. Say but you mean not this. Ungracious maid, had my hand, think you, been so prone to wound? Oft has my father said, while live this youth, his worshipped Roxolana's son, and my departed mother's, should no new sultana his splendor share, or gay Zanana rule. Yet now he bids me for the nuptial feast prepare. Persia's wild rose, Golzara hail his chosen bride. 
tis strange i own but true why look you so dismayed this is or should the hour of jovial gratulation be oh no no not to me allah to wed the sultan suleiman to join with his this hand forsworn with perjured lips to vow eternal faith and endless love to mock the throne of allah with false oaths when i have neither love to give or faith to vow rather like faithful dido when the voice of suppliant subjects bade her in her lord's lamented place a rival throne i'd light mine own funereal pyre rather would wed rich in this fond heart's wealth the poorest serf that tills the earth to gain his hard-earned bread suffer oppression infamy with him toil starve with him than my allegiance sworn another's be the harem envied bride sultana of the sultan suleiman queen of his heart and empress of the east this is untoward yet i blame you not had i so loved as constant would i prove what says my father more reads wonders on wonders thou knowest i had determined ne'er to wed but who shall with his heaven-ruled kisma war list to my tale beguiling with the chase the hours of truce a huntsman as he seemed on the green borders of the tigris viewed a maiden writhing in a giaur's grasp and motioning back his train did rescue her you that have seen gulzara wonder not they met again he vowed that she should be his bride but tested first her faith to know if rather she would live the favoured slave of suleiman or wife of her unknown she passed the ordeal twas himself not state which she i think yet dreams not of she loved and shall be as he swore her huntsman's bride gulzara gulzara rejoice the sultan is hafed faints they support her o oh, sister with the sudden joy you've killed her see katinka haste thee fly summon the palace hakim with all speed tis needless noble princess she revives then give her air she lacks but breath new life this happy news already has bestowed she opens her eyes gulzara speak to us that voice again where is he? Hafed, art thou here? Let me but look upon thee ere I die. Tis Amareth, your Hafed's son, or Suleiman's, that bids you for his sake to live. Was it no vision then? Is he? And Amareth, thou art. Is Hafed then? The Sultan Suleiman. Our father. And I am. His bride. Fatima and Katinka saluting her. Our, Our new, Sultana. new Sultana, hail! hail now may i share your transports never more at fate's harsh seeming murmur for her wheel revolving ever hurls us to its base to hurry to the summit with more speed and with this latter evolution bears joy's pinnacle a goodly throng to-night and what have i left to wish my brother back embracing him freed by himself sweet sister when you tell our father of my mischance forget not that your, your joy, joy is, ours. is ours my loved boy once more mine and hafed suleiman hail happy end no more zuleika's brow with frowns shall bend ayesha fierceness fain she ne'er could feel or woe of amarath bid teardrops steal to pitying orbs that smiling greet his wheel or fatima's bright eyes and morals sage contend with most your pleasure could engage or mild katinka though her station low still hope to share the praises you bestow our mimic passions o'er to the actors each lip that grieved in fabled sorrow be with smiles enwreathed those lips now welcome mirth with keener zest 
nor mourn their woe to the audience if echoed in your breast if courteous still by our emotions led you will share our gladness in grief's stead and grant the boon galzara yet must crave your pleased approval of the, the persian slave. slave the end end of act five and of galzara or the persian slave by anna cora morwett